Oh yeah, three, two, one, go. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Brad. Good to see you as always. Nice to see you as well. What a workout this morning, man. Wow. <laughs> if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Tom is trying to kill me. <laughs> man, I, I had it in my mind last night that it would be heavy dumbbells. It was. And so it was. We saw the 75 pound dumbbells, the 60 pound dumbbells, the 50 pound dumbbells, yeah. the 40 pound dumbbells. 40 pound ones. I, uh, <laughs> I was on autopilot this morning. The coffee had not yet kicked in. Wow. I'm just mindlessly putting out what I already had set in motion. And then uh, by the time I woke up and you got there and I looked at the display, I thought, oh, what have I done to us? You were pleasant with the 50 pound medicine ball. Right? I mean, I would have expected the 100 pound out of you this morning. And how much was that uh, um, kettlebell? 62. 62 pounds. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't too bad. 62 pound kettlebell. Yeah. For I was... goblet squats. So hold on to that thing. Don't drop it on your toe. I know. I'm already feeling them. I am already. <laughs> when, uh, when I set up the first four exercises with the heavy dumbbells, I was on autopilot. And by the time I got to the fifth and sixth ones, which were lighter, mm -hmm. I, my, I was starting to come to. <laughs> I was starting to wake up, and then I, I was like, oh, I was gonna put out the the seventy one pound kettlebell, and then the dog on hundred pound uh -huh. ball. slam ball, but uh, I decided against that. I was driving home this morning, thinking, <laughs> how much Epsom salts do I need to buy to put in my pool for the weekend? <laughs> for the pool. For the pool. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So, welcome back to the podcast, Therapy Unzipped. We are also live on TikTok, TikTok and Bethinks, I guess. Let's check this out. Cool. Good morning, uh, everybody. Good Happy morning. Happy Friday. We are here. I don't know what day here. it is you're watching this, but this is the Friday before Memorial Day weekend for us. Yeah. So, happy Memorial Day weekend happy to Memorial you guys. Uh, honor those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you for your service time <laughs> as a you. veteran. Thank you. Today, we're going to discuss the cure for anxiety. The cure for anxiety, Tom? Are you, what, what, what? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, we, we have the cure, man. No worries. We have it's the okay. cure for anxiety. <laughs> hey, guess what? We're going to be billionaires. Yeah. If We have the sure. cure for anxiety. Yeah. So it's night. So in, in about a month, we'll be broadcasting from our own private island because we'll be billionaires. We'll be billionaires. Uh, let's see. Good morning, guys. Good morning, D. What's up? Glad that you guys are here. So, anyway, so did that grab you and pull you in? The cure for anxiety? Wow. Let's talk about anxiety. For okay. Me. What is it? Anxiety. Yeah. Everyone, I mean, everyone knows what anxiety is. What What was it? The whole um, Supreme Court thing? I don't know what <laughs> pornography is, but I know it when I see it. I know when I see it. I don't really know what anxiety is, but I know it when I feel it. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, anxiety. It is... Um, Worry, excessive worry. Excessive worry is a okay. small definition, yeah. right? I always like to say depression is worrying about the past. Anxiety is worrying about the future. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Anxiety man, can be can look a lot, lot of different things, right? Yeah. So you think about something over and over again. You worry about what's going to happen. Um, I've always told the story. My mother had a really bad case of anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, and she, her favorite saying was... If you worry about the worst case scenario, because that's what anxiety is, you always worry about the worst case scenario. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna blow this project at work, I'm gonna get fired, I'm gonna they're gonna foreclose on my house, my family's gonna be homeless. I mean, we go down those paths, right? Worst yeah. case scenario. Even if you blew the pro the project, you're probably not getting fired. And yeah. even if you got fired, you're probably gonna get another job, right? Anyway, so she would say if you worried about the worst case scenario, and in the unlikely event that it actually happened. You've lived it twice. Why do you want to live something like that twice? Right. Live it once. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Live it once. Needless suffering. Needless suffering. We put so much time, energy, emotion, thought. We're exhausted about thinking about the future possibilities. Yeah. Delion, hey, nice to see you too, man. Great that you're here. He's got anxiety uh, attacks, so uh, this is prime for us to discuss this All right. this morning. So glad that you're here. Um, so my mother, all ha she had to say to me, once I internalized that, that statement and understood what it meant, and she'd see me, you know, be anxious about something, she's like, don't live it twice. Yeah. And I use that phrase 
over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. It is like, I, I there's nothing to worry about until there's something to worry about. Right. Right. I'm worrying about what I could be worrying about in the future. And it's just such a needless waste of emotional and brain energy. So what's the cure? What's the cure? The cure is in with is within you. Don't be. <laughs> Don't you, be anxious, right? You have to, yeah, just don't be anxious. Stop, that, stop it. Just stop it. Just stop right, it. Right? <laughs> what was that? Was a Saturday Night Live skit or something? Yeah. 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 Or um, Bob Newhart. Or Bob Newhart. That's what yeah. it was. Yeah. Hey, yeah. 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 <laughs> stop it. Stop it. If it were that easy, then you want the great. five minute uh, one? Or you want the hour long one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, really, when you boil it down, it's what it is. You yeah. have to remind yourself that you cannot control the future, mm -hmm. right? You cannot predict what's going to happen. You should prepare for what could happen, yeah. right? Spending some time preparing for what could happen. We talk about top sand all the time. The sand that's on the bottom is gone. Don't worry about it, right? right. On the hourglass. Can't really do anything about it. You can't do anything about it. And you can only focus on the top sand, right? The sand that is, is, is now. So 95% of your time should be focused on today and the future. Yeah. But most of that should be focused on today. And it should be focused on being present right now. Uh, in this episode, we'll probably get into some of the actual DSM-5 disorders um, sure. that have anxiety as a component mm -hmm. of them related to anxiety. Um, a little bit of thought disorders like from OCD and whatnot. Uh, we'll talk about some of the potential um, interventions, some of the treatment modalities for it. Mm -hmm. And we'll just talk about more anxiety, maybe even personal stuff today. So um, mm -hmm. I wanted to share this based on, and I know you agree right, and would concur with this in working with a lot of individuals that have anxiety, that have anxiety disorders. And a disorder just means that whatever that symptom is, it's impairing your ability or it's interfering with your ability to function an impairment of functioning. So um, you can still have anxiety and not have a disorder. All right. But anyway, anxiety. Most people who have anxiety don't have a disorder. Yeah. The uh, excessive worry. Um, it's when we boil it down, and we've done this in sessions with people over the years, I mean, collectively, 50 years. Right. That work. <laughs> uh, well, 50, 50 100,000 hours. <laughs> yeah. Anxiety is fear. fear. That's what it is. Yeah. It's all related to some sort of fear. Right. And so there are thoughts automatic thoughts about fear and then also like occurring thoughts mm -hmm. about fear. Mm -hmm. And if we want to truly tackle our anxiety, doesn't mean it's going to cure it and make it all go away. It's the cure for today right now in right. this moment is addressing what are those fears? Let's boil it all down. If you have anxiety and you feel like you don't know where, where it's coming from, okay, what are you doing right now I'm going to work. Okay, let's just take this as an example. I'm going to work, so and I, I feel anxious. I don't know what where it's coming from. I don't really have any thoughts, or at least nothing that's current or present right now that I'm thinking that's causing the anxiety. But if we know that it's, it's related to fears, or maybe a single fear, then what would be the fear related to what I'm actually doing? I'm going to work. My fear about work might be I'm going to have to engage with uh, a Karen or a Kathy <laughs> type of person. Um, I know some great Karens and some great Kathy, so, you know, but I also know some not so nice ones. Right. Um, I might have to deal with a challenging person. I might have to deal with a difficult client, or it might be deeper than that. I fear that I'm not going to be able to sustain my entrepreneurial practice. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to make enough money. I'm not going to be able to provide for my family. We're going to be homeless. These could all be fears associated with me going to work. There might be a fear that I'm going to get in a car accident and not be able to work or something bad is going to happen. The fear might be if it might be even, even deeper than that, if I can't work and can't provide for my family and I get injured, um, of course, death is a huge fear that many people have. Um, but okay, if if I can't work, can't provide for my family, I'm going to lose my partner. You know, mm -hmm. my wife's not going to want to be around me, or she's not going to be want to want to be in the marriage anymore. That could be a fear. And then I'm not going to, you know, if you are a relationship type of person, then losing that that spouse might be a big fear that you have because you put all of your 
you know, you have this dependence on the other person being there so that you're not lonely, so that you feel okay about yourself, so you feel validated. And we talked about this morning needing this external validation. So maybe we'll get into that. But if you can discover what is that fear that is causing that has precipitated the anxiety that you're experiencing right. right now, then you can either figure out what do I have within my control to assure that that thing doesn't happen? What can I do possibly directly or indirectly to prevent that thing from happening? Um, get into some sort of action or acceptance of this is something that's out of my control and whether I do or don't, it may or may not happen anyway. So why, going back to your point, why needlessly suffer? Only suffer if that thing happens, then suffer. Right. Live it once. So, But that's really important that you bring up that anxiety is based in fear, right? Yeah. Let's talk about different kinds of anxiety. So you have generalized anxiety, mm -hmm. just that general worry. I kind of worry about all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah. And that could be boiled down sometimes of a fear of, am I safe? I'm not safe. Right. Or I'm not good enough or people don't like me or, mm -hmm. you know, and some of those like, uh, am I safe? I mean, kids that were grow that grew up in chaotic environments, right? Maybe parents drank, maybe um, parents weren't around, maybe parents split up and one parent had to work and, you know, there was different caregivers. I mean, lots of different scenarios can happen, but people have a, a fear of I'm not safe. And so they have that generalized worry about they can even have a generalized worry about everything because I'm not safe, you know. Yeah. So I'm anxious about making that long distance car ride. I'm anxious about, um, you know, uh, meeting new people because I don't know who they are and, you know, are they trustworthy? And, right. Or, the, you know, so the generalized. You can have specific phobias, right? Yeah. Like driving is a specific phobia. And mm -hmm. it's like, I'm not safe. I'm going to get in a car accident. There's all these crazy drivers out there. Mm -hmm. Or uh, a specific phobia of flying. I mean, that's a very common right. one. Uh, it's not safe. I'm going to die. The plane's going to go down, you know, the turbulent, you know, and they freak out. So those right. are those are specific phobias. Um, Heights, snakes. Exactly. All those things. And it's right. based in fear. The, yeah. the snake's going to kill me if I grumble and let her. I'm going to mm -hmm. fall and die, break yeah. my back, whatever. So, those, so you have generalized anxiety of specific phobias. You have um, panic disorder, right? So mm -hmm. pa like panic attacks, you know, people, you've seen people probably, maybe you've had one yourself. I feel like I have a heart attack, heart's racing, sweaty right. palms, feel like my head's going to explode, whatever. Um, panic I, I is an good. external manifestation of anxiety. Right. So your brain cannot process all the anxiety going through your body right now. So it pushes it, it physiologically. So you feel like you're having a heart attack. You can't catch your breath. You can't breathe. Um, you can't you can't concentrate. Your mind's racing. You're you're you know, you're shallow breathing and all kinds yeah. of stuff could happen. Um, so we could talk about panic. That's a whole different kind of thing. You know, we got to we work with people on trying to manage their panic. Sometimes you can feel it coming. Sometimes you can avoid it. We just work on different sensory types of things to get through panic. But panic is a just a physiological, physical manifestation of anxiety. Yeah. Um, so that's panic. And then you have like uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, where if I have to do these ritualistic things in order to keep my anxiety in check, right? This is how I my anxiety manifests. So if I lock the door seven times, then nobody will break into my apartment. Right. If I check the stove five times before I go to bed, then the, the stove will not burn down the house while I'm sleeping. It's just a different... Mm -hmm ritualistic how i try to manage my anxiety which anxiety as you you know i talk and say a thousand words and you say it in five so you're much more eloquent than i but <laughs> no i mean anxiety so boils good. down to fear what yeah, am i afraid fair. of what is my underlying fear mechanism here what that's what we really have to tackle uh to get to the cure uh, of course uh odd said the cure is a band <laughs> the cure is a band <laughs> yeah the cure is a band yeah you know Boys don't, <laughs> boys don't cry. It's a great band. It's a great too. band, yeah. Uh, bro was my friend in MySpace. Remember that, Tom? Right. Uh, yeah. uh, and our friend Blazerman in here, polyva polyvagal nerve technique, Vegas nerve exercises are great for panic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I've utilized those. Um, mm -hmm. I have a spattering of those kind of techniques, but uh, I think uh, engaging in, in whatever works well for you. And you might have to find out what works for you because what works for you may not work for me or for right. anybody else, but if it works for you, then great. You might have to experiment. 
I always tell people Google um, ways to get out of a panic attack because you'll get a thousand different suggestions oh, yeah. and you, some one of them will speak to you. I have two great examples. Um, I had this woman I worked with was a new executive and she always slipped into a panic like during a board meeting. Yeah. Right. And it was the, I'm not good enough. Her fear was I'm going to look like an idiot and I don't belong here and I'm a fraud, you know, all, right. that, all that kind of yeah. stuff. But so we talked about different things. She Googled and what she did was she had a Yeti full of ice water that she carried with her. Everybody does that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but it was really just ice and they were big ice cubes and or they started in the morning. But anyway, when she felt the panic coming on, she would take an ice cube out and push it to the roof of her mouth. Mm -hmm. And that was enough of a sensory shift. Yeah. That it would take her mind off of the panic because panic is a negative feedback loop, right? Mm -hmm. I have this negative thought of I'm not good enough and I'm a fraud in there and I don't belong in this boardroom. And then, oh my God, they're going to, they're, they're going to discover me and I'm a fraud and I'm going to, and right. you're just in this negative feedback loop. Yeah. So when you skip the record and most people don't, younger people don't know what that means, but you got to, <laughs> you got to jump the loop, right? You got to figure out a way to, to stop that cycle. And the cold ice on her roof of her mouth stopped the cycle for her. Yeah. I have lots of people that um, carry very sour or hot, like, candy. Yep. Like the hot cinnamon candy or the Sour Patch Kids or the Warheads or any of those things. And if they feel a panic coming on, they'll put that in their mouth. And that sensory shift is enough to break that uh, panic cycle. Sure. It pulls you back into the present moment, it which is something we like, talk about. Oh, this is so hot. Yeah. yeah. We talk about a lot about being in the present moment and bringing ourselves back into the present moment, mm -hmm. being mindful. These things, they're not just like that kitschy or just sounds mm -hmm. good. These are the techniques that, that really work. work to bring yourself back. So you can tackle uh, your fears. And if you can't do that right at the, the present moment because it's too overwhelming or maybe you need to do it in a safe space like with a therapist, uh, do something that triggers the senses something uh, positive or just something that shifts your focus right. into, okay, I'm experiencing this sour taste or this cold taste, changing your temperature, intense physical exercise, cold uh, water on your wrist. Yeah. Uh, paced breathing, progressive muscle relaxation. These are some techniques that help to kind of pull you back in the moment, maybe trigger a parasympathetic response, mm -hmm. which is the opposite. When you are having uh, an anxiety or a panic attack or you feel overwhelmed or stress is getting the better of you and you are triggered or because of a previous trauma, then you go into the sympathetic fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. And if you want to counteract that, just biologically speaking, you have to do something that's soothing, something that's relaxing, something that makes you feel comfortable something that makes you feel safe. Mm -hmm. And that'll trigger that parasympathetic, mm -hmm. that rest and digest uh, physiological response. So many people, just take this scenario, many people, when they start to experience a panic attack, and um, they will run into the bathroom and then they're looking in the mirror and they're kind of washing their hands and they're trying to splash water on their face and they're freaking out and like, oh my God, what's going on? What's going on? Oh my God. And they're just perpetuating the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So you could still go to the bathroom but look in the mirror, put your hands and your wrists under the cold water and say, I'm just fine. Everything is good. I'm safe. I'm here. I'm right now. This is just going to last a moment. So don't perpetuate what's going on by uh -huh. freaking out even more because mm -hmm. you're because now I'm in a panic attack. And, oh, my God. Blah, blah, blah. So you have to do the opposite of that. I'm just fine. If this is a moment in time. I'm going to get through this. This will be over in a few minutes. Yes, it's not comfortable and my heart is racing, and but I'm going to be fine and this is good. And I've lived through this before. And so mm -hmm. you have to do the opposite. So, and then, I mean, the, the technique that most people um, teach for that is just engaging your senses. What are five things I can see? What are four things I can hear? What are two, three things I can smell? What are two things I can touch? Yeah. Kind of thing. Think about this. We have really good lives. I mean, you know, yeah. like we can complain about shit. My of life's course. a 10. Right, but our <laughs> life's pretty much 10. <clears throat> the better your life is, the more you have to lose. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about fears, mm -hmm. you might engage in some sabotage because if my life's really good, everything's bubbling, my career is, is phenomenal, money in the bank, right? My spouse is really happy. We have a great life together. The dogs are good. Friendships are great. 
you know, there might be that, oh shit, when is the next shoe going to drop? Right. What's going to happen? When is my world going to get rocked <clears throat> and flipped upside down? So uh, I might do something to sabotage it so I can say, oh, look, there it is. See, okay, I mm -hmm. fucked that up, right? You know, right. Um, so because we have more to lose, there might be more of a fear present and subsequent anxiety that comes with it. Yeah, for sure. I was thinking that on the way over here today, like, you know, mm -hmm. shit, are we sabotaging ourselves sometimes? Mm -hmm. Are we creating adversity in our lives, you know, or challenges for ourselves just so we can feel that like, oh, OK, this is the next thing that I have to tackle. All right. <laughs> That's and I do that in my life. Maybe I don't sabotage like relationships or business practices or anything like that, but I might in, engage in some challenging thing that forces me to uh, uh, to have to act like, okay, I took on doing yoga and becoming a yoga teacher this mm -hmm. year. Something that's really out of my element, something that I'm not great with, something that I've practiced sporadically, but I want to get really good at it. So it's been a challenge. So I've done it every single day this year already. Great. And I became a yoga teacher. And I'm becoming like working on more advanced uh, studies and you can really go down the rabbit hole with that. Um, and you could really perfect. I mean, just a simple pose like a downward facing dog. I mean, you could really work on perfecting that in such a way that, you know, your elbows are almost to the ground, your head's on the ground, your heels are on the ground and everything is stretched and lengthened and mm -hmm. opened. And, you know, I'm, not even close to being there yet, but like just doing that one pose, like you can each day work on it and perfect it and tweak it a little bit. Right. Um, sorry, I'm talking too much about this yoga thing, but that's just like a challenge that I've right. taken on this year. So if you notice you're the type that life's really good and mm -hmm. I feel like I'm going to sabotage something or I feel like I'm going to screw something up because that's what's comfortable for me because that's what my life has always been, a series of unfortunate events or traumas that have happened, then you might be prone to engaging and doing things unconsciously that are going to screw things up. So um, did I miss anything? Uh, oh, Blazerman. But uh, for real, I found exercise consistently helps so much for anxiety. Yeah, 100%, man. That's what works well for me and works well for you. If you can find what works for, for, for you, then mm -hmm. do those things. If you have the formula... It's so funny when I have clients in here and I say, you know, have you ever engaged in exercise? Have you ever done yoga or something, right. you know? And they're like, yeah, I did it. And the, when you were doing it, how'd you feel? I felt really good about myself. But now I'm like depressed and anxious and like, you know, just worried about my future. I feel like my partner's cheating on me or going to leave me or something. I feel like my whole lot world is going to get blown up at any moment. Are you doing any exercise or yoga? You know, those are just two examples, mm -hmm. but you can fill in the blanks or whatever. No. no. Yeah. <sighs> Exercise is so important. Um, we talk about the top five things that you just got to do every day, you know, to prepare yourself to manage. The definition of a happy life is not the absence of adversity. That's what people want. Like, I don't want adversity in my life. And when I have adversity, it makes my life crappy. And see, mm -hmm. I have a crappy life because I have adversity. Yeah. Everybody has adversity. Every single person has adversity at of some point every day, right? Yeah. The, se the secret of a happy life is not the absence of adversity. It's how you manage the adversity that comes at you on a daily basis. 100%. And we talk about getting halfway there is doing five things a day, yeah. right? Getting good sleep. Sleep is the magic bullet for good mental health. You yeah. know, a good sleep schedule, six, six and a half to eight and a half hours a day, seven to eight hours a day, some basic good nutrition, right? It doesn't mean you have to follow a specific diet, you know, to the letter. It just means don't eat a bunch of crap every day. Mm. You know, you don't need a bunch of preservatives and all that garbage that, you know, they put in a box um, or, or all of that um, fast food stuff. So <laughs> I eat fast food like probably once a week, but I only eat it like once a week. You know, yeah. all this, um, mostly the other food I eat, I try to be as good and healthy um, and not from a box as possible. Yeah, that burger you were telling me about this morning, yeah. you were like, it was delicious, but afterwards, oh no. I didn't, yeah. <laughs> you eat all that crappy food and you just don't feel good. So anyway, sleep, nutrition, uh, uh, just eating clean most of the time. Um, hydration, water is so, so important. Um of following some basic schedule. Don't live your life aimlessly, right? You don't have to follow it and have a, a schedule for every half hour of every day, but 
follow a basic schedule. This is when I work out every day. This is when I take a walk. This is when I eat. This is when I work. This is when I sleep. Um, and the last one is uh, some form of exercise. Right. Some form of exercise, whatever that is for you. Um, start small and work your way up. You know, I was always a walker. I walked every day. That was my cardio. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not a power walker, but I'd walk a good 45 minutes every day. When I had some advert, more than average adversity in my life, I started running. Yeah. Not because I hate running. I, me and running don't get along. If I ever meet the guy that created recreational <laughs> running for a sport, I would punch him in the face. <laughs> Here you go. I got I something for you. Hate running, right? But it's what I had to do for as a distraction. Yeah. Right? Because I was running, I was so focused on not dying and breathing that I didn't have to worry about it, yeah. that I didn't have to think about the adversity that I was challenged in my life. You kind of created the adversity for yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's going to happen. Right. And if I can have some control over it, right, right and I can actually create it in my life, yeah. something that is will be healthy for me to tackle and mm-hmm. overcome, then do that. Right. Back to controlling the fear or trying to address the fear understanding the things that you have control over mm-hmm. and focusing on that yeah. yeah. actions, behaviors, thoughts, feelings, all of those things related to the things that are within your control. Very, very important. And then the other stuff, you have to accept that I'm not going to have any control of what the other people do on the road, but I can control how fast I go, how much I pay attention, whether or not I try to run, Red lights, uh, you know. Wear I my seatbelt. Wear a seatbelt, maybe leave a little bit early, you know. Stay off those dangerous roads. Yeah, exactly. Stay oh, man, on the way here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, uh, speaking of a little dangerous road, I take some back roads just to avoid the main, you know, highways because there's like the five lights, you know. So it takes like 30 minutes to get from home, even though it should only take like 12 minutes. Anyway, but there's this one lady on a bike. Uh, uh, a Karen, if you will, or a Kathy, or whatever. That... <sighs> She's been fucking up my commute for years. <laughs> she takes the roads that I take where there are no sidewalks. So she's bicycle, right? Like, you know, not quite in the middle of the road, but enough where it's only two lanes. Right. You have to get over. But of course, coming to work in the morning and school zones and traffic or not, you don't always have the opportunity. So you're going like 12 miles an hour waiting because. This woman, same woman, same bike, you know, it's like daily. <laughs> oh, you'd think I would learn, you know, to go a different route. But I choose that route just because, you know, I don't get it every single day. I don't want to hit all those lights. And sometimes those main roads where there's like four, five lanes of, uh, of traffic, you know, people, it's asshole hour. So people are just zipping in and out. You know? mm-hmm. Hey, anyway. stop talking about me. I only do that on my motorcycle. <laughs> well, I mean, you can do that, right? Mm-hmm. You can take off on the motorcycle and you can really gun it and just. Well, and you know, most people, boy, this is taking a switch, but most people on motorcycles, they're like, oh, look at that guy. He's a jerk on a motorcycle, right? Motorcycles get go fast to get ahead of the traffic because they don't want to ride next to cars because the cars are trying to kill them constantly. Yeah. So on a motorcycle, I go fast to get away from tra- traffic. Uh-huh. So I just want to get 20 yards ahead of all the traffic and I'll stay there. I don't yeah. have to speed, but I'm staying away from all the cars. I don't want cars next to me. Of course. Mm-hmm. So that's why they do that. If you're wondering why they do that, that's why they do that. So um, let's run through some of the uh, disorders. Once again, the disorder is whatever those symptoms are, they are um, creating a situation where you are having difficulty functioning in life. So Impair- generalized anxiety disorder. It impairs your family, uh, relationship with your family, ability to go to work or school, um, impacts your health. Right. You know, One or of, all. One or all. of those things. Mm-hmm. Generalized anxiety uh, disorder, social anxiety disorder, uh, separation anxiety, Panic attacks, um, or panic disorder, mm-hmm. agoraphobia, specific phobias, specific phobias, um, obsessive compulsive, obsessive compulsive. Uh, those are kind of the main ones that I leave. There, mm-hmm. there might have been something that I uh, um, left out. Selective mutism or something. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, there's generalized where you worry about all kinds of stuff. There's specific. Um, 
either specific phobias or like social anxiety or yeah. you know those are specific that you worry about one specific interaction or one specific thing panic is the when the anxiety increases to a point that it's a physiological manifestation of the anxiety mm -hmm. and then social afraid of like social situations right. and whatnot agoraphobia being you know afraid of Outside. being in crowds or being out of the house or you know so um anyway there, and we didn't really talk about trauma too much today but post-traumatic stress disorder Mm -hmm. that has a component of anxiety in it so For anxiety sure. can be a symptom related to a lot of different things but we're just kind of talking about the main specifically anxiety related we should do i'll we'll do a show on ptsd yeah it's a good always one. really good yeah um well, so what are some like, of the let's back that up it's not a good one <laughs> is that right <laughs> yes it's a bad one super that you have that let's uh <laughs> that, that's let's get awesome <laughs> No, it's not a good thing, <laughs> yes. but it's a good thing to talk about. Absolutely, because a lot of people have it. And, yeah. uh, so why such an increase in anxiety? Like, we're in an anxiety true. epidemic, right? Yeah. So, I mean, even like 10 years ago, we have people that we treat with anxiety. Every person that walks in the door has some level of anxiety right now. Everyone. Every single person. And what is going on? Yeah. So we talk about it boils down to a fear, right? And and, uh, and everybody has a fear of not being in control. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not in control. And what we're seeing on the TV and on TikTok and on the news and in, on whatever it is we're getting information is telling us that we're not in control. Mm -hmm. The world's upside down. Our political system is upside down. We're going into one of the most contentious elections of our lifetime right, with we, huge ramifications on the outcomes enormous huge we have the world that's upside down and there's wars cropping creeping up everywhere right. all over there's the unrest all over the world we just came out of a pandemic came out of a pandemic right our economy is you know in an interesting place um you know pr prices are going up the interest rates are through the roof are you kidding me i'm looking at buying a house right now are you kidding me at seven percent interest on a mortgage what i know as i digress yeah <laughs> there's lots of everything every yeah. news point or every information that we receive is telling us that we're not in control all out of our control oh, and i remember you saying a while back anytime uh a community or um the world experiences a significant event like the pandemic, the effects are not truly felt or realized or seen, observed until 18 months to two months. years later. Yeah. And hey. hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah. So all this shit that's happening out there, and we see it all over, all over social media, all over the, the news. Even if you're not watching the news, you know, people are still talking about it and or Googling it or, you know, feeds are coming up left and right. So all the stuff that is completely out of our control. You know what absolutely 100 percent kills me is the governments have come out over the last year and told everybody, yes, aliens exist. Yes, we've had been in contact with uh, extraterrestrials or oh, right. beings from another planet for years but it's like nobody even cares it's like yeah okay cool and that, that's awesome yeah i'm like holy moly like you know this this stuff exists but no one even is talking about it yeah oh yeah that's cool we've got some comments from our, our friends out there all right um our friend brother's blazerman always uh, has some good comments so trying to control is the problem mm -hmm. mm. hypochondria too you know worried about that you have all these different Mm -hmm. ailments or things and also there's a lot of pressure on people to succeed or excel and that constant pressure is anxiety you know Tremendous the control is a great thing think about you're on the highway and you're driving in a stressful situation and the tighter you grip that wheel the, the better you drive right right no, no but you feel like it no. yeah you're trying to control things you know physically. <clears throat> so just let go and the be better if you just relax and kind mm -hmm. of go with it but control is a very common thing. If I and I, control is a basic element of obsessive compulsive disorder. Right. And I am you, taking control out of a situation that I can't control. With that specific disorder, if you cannot control those situations, mm -hmm. you cannot control the intrusive thoughts or the obsessive thoughts, then 
what can you do about it? Well, I can think about it over and over again. I can ruminate about it. Mm -hmm. I can engage in these acts like counting, washing hands, flipping the light switch on and on, all those different things, you know, germs, you know, I got to wash the sheets twice a day, you know, the uh, things of that nature. Um, those are things within my control. So I feel like it's reducing some of my anxiety, but it's really not with OCD. The more that you engage in those compulsions, because they don't have a direct uh, effect on what it is your fear is, the anxiety is going to get worse. OCD and this is going to be a little controversial, but eating disorders. Mm -hmm. I can't control A, B, and C, but I can control how many times I check the stove, how many times I lock the door, what food I do or do not put in my mouth, how much I exercise. Right. It's I can't control these things, so but I can control these things. Sure. So they offset each other, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the not. problem. They just do not. You think they right. do. You're trying to play that game in your head where um, they offset each other, but they don't. No. So really good comments. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for being in here. And you know that I see it with the young people that I, uh, I have in, um, in here in the office that, that with school and grades and doing, you know, all these things so that they can get into a good college. Like they are at their wits end of trying to meet all these expectations, not only of their parents, but in competition with each other and with just society at large feeling like uh, they need to absolutely excel and look at what social media has done. Not only are they comparing themselves to the people in their grade or at their school, but millions of people that are online right. that they're watching and observing. Right. No wonder the anxiety has right. increased. I mean, the expectations are ridiculous. Yeah. And teenage suicide has gone up. Yeah, it's, it's not just because of bullying. It's a lot of the anxiety of not meeting those expectations or not feeling like they're ever going to meet those. And expectations. setting such unrealistic expectations. I mean, it, you know, watching kids, um, young adults now, prepare for college and whatever. It's like to, to get into some schools, the expectations are so ridiculous. Right. Um, you know, straight A's and, you know, and it's not just your grades, but it's your experiences. And what did you volunteer for? What, you know, are you a well-rounded person? Do you play sports? What, where did you work? You know, do, what did you volunteer? What are all your right. extracurricular activities? Yeah. And I mean, just to get good grades takes up 95% of your right. emotional and, you know, brain energy. Yeah. But then you have to do all these extra things. What do you have time to be a kid? Yeah. There, there's no time to be a kid. Yeah. Well, that's why so many kids get to college and crash and burn because right. they've lived such strict lives for so many years prepping for this. And then they get to college and, mm. and it's a very small percent of the population now that's 25 that can actually afford to buy a house. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like I have a t almost 25 and a 21 year old and the things out of their mouth is that I won't be able to ever be able to afford it. Ever. House. Right. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. it's anxiety provoking. Yeah. But you know, worry about things that are in your control and not things that are out of. Why are you gonna why are you gonna have anxiety about a house that you can't buy in ten years from now? It's let's, not let's, serving let's, you. Let's worry about that in yeah. ten years. Yeah, how is that worry, how is that um engaging in that fear um serving you right mm -hmm. now in the present moment? It's not. It's not. Who knows what's gonna happen in the a lot can happen in six months. A lot can happen in a year. A lot can happen in five years, ten years. Who knows? Let's just focus on today. Minutes, Tom. <laughs> all right, let's just focus on today. Let's focus on today. What am yeah. I going to do today? That's all we really have. What do What do I have this to do moment. today to make today the best it can be? And what can I do today to set myself up for a good tomorrow? Sure. That's it. That's all yeah. I'm worried about. That's where ninety percent of my attention is going to go. So ultimately and simplistically, the cure for anxiety is to just live as much as you can in the present moment yeah. and do healthy things for yourself. Right. And worry about things that are in control. Yeah. So if it's not in your control, let it go. Mm -hmm. And worry about it when it becomes in your control. Mm -hmm. But like uh, our friend Jake said, let's not complicate this. You're right. Yeah. You're Why do we have to complicate right. it? <laughs> All right. Now, and in the words of Bob Newhart, Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, so the cure, or 
not the band, <laughs> the Cure, is a daily a daily thing. So I mean, I guess we could argue Cure. What, what's um, what's you know um, just sort of a it, and I don't think it's really a band aid, but um, it's a daily thing that I have to do. You know, as if you just approach each day as a new uh, a new day, having new opportunities. Um, needing to kind of master or control the things that are within my control. That's mm -hmm. really important. So just because you do that for one day doesn't mean that you're cured right. uh, because there's still things that are causing our anxiety. There's still things that we have that are fears. Do those five basic things we've talked about um, to set yourself up to be as resilient as possible to manage the adversity that comes at you for the day and manage what's in your control, spend 90 to 95% of your time on today and tomorrow. Yeah, Let it go. exactly. So anything else I, you want to add? So, and, and we know, I, I mean, I've said this a million times, it's real easy to say and hard to do. Get it. Get it. Know it. Lived it. Live it. Yeah. Get it. But it's going to take practice like everything else. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time, Tom. Thank you, Brett, as always. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for tuning in to the show. Uh, thanks for listening to the podcast, and we look forward to seeing you next Friday. Y'all be well. Yeah. Thanks, Blazer. Therapy Unzip. Questions at therapyunzip.com. Right. If you have questions you'd like us to uh, address on the show or, uh, or anything you'd like for us to tackle, please send your questions to questions at therapyunzip.com, and we'll respond, and we'll probably talk about it on the next show. All right. Thank you, guys. Happy Friday, Tom. Happy Friday. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Yes. See you Take guys. Care. Now. All righty. Now go enjoy your fucking day. <laughs>